Hi guys, you're here with Barry, and uh, you're together with my latest victim, Dave. And um, Dave, I want to just say hi to everybody out on YouTube land. Hey everybody. Hey, Dave is a guy, man, and he's a massive man, and a massive man with a massive heart. It's been, uh, gosh, I think we both learned a lot on this trip, and, and I want to, I want you all to meet Dave, and I want Dave to tell you his, his perspective of things, and about how there's always options in life and some of the things he's been through. One of the more interesting people I've ever met on our DR Escapes tours. And, and Dave, I want to first thank you for doing this, Blood. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure, been been totally our pleasure. Um, Dave, you were in, you were, you spent, in, tell us a little bit about your background because damn, you've been places too and you've, <laughs> you've seen what most people dream of seeing and, and just tell us a little bit about your career, your military, your experience in the, in the fighting and it, it's just been amazing. It's been a really interesting, interesting, uh, you know, normally guys, this is a five day deal with, uh, with Dave, it's been kind of getting near two weeks and I'm learning awesome. every day from the guy and it's been uh, it's been a real pleasure for Leanne Johnny and me to meet this man and uh, I hope one day I can get to meet his son as well and uh, <laughs> Dave just just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and great great uh, well my name is David um, I'm a war veteran uh, military army uh, I've played organized sports uh, overseas in uh, Germany uh, Frankfurt Galaxy um, I've traveled a lot, um, especially in the Southern Hemisphere and in North America and around North America. So I think I'm a well around traveled guy. I've seen a few things, been a few places. I would say so. Uh, <laughs> you've been in, uh, in the U.S. military for quite some time. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your station, where you were stationed, what you did, and, and, and perhaps most importantly at the end, what you've learned? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I've been to many duty stations. Um, Fort Lee, Virginia, uh, Fort Stewart, Fort Bragg, Fort Benning, uh, over in Germany, Cape Town. Uh, had multiple MOSs, uh, 11B, 12B, uh, 18 Bravo, which that's military talk, but that's really like infantry, uh, field infantry, uh, truck driving, uh, food service, uh, special forces classified, uh, a, a range of different MOSs. And what are some of the things you discovered about your, your, uh, your I guess, uh, stationings around the world? What is it that you've discovered about people? Well, I think as far as people, uh, we are more the same than different. Um, I think we all want the same thing in life, which is a good family, health, and enjoy the, the, the peace of happiness. You found it to be a lot of things that you ran into over there, the more you look different the more things look the same absolutely do you feel these people are any threat to Western culture it's amazing is when you get to a place you have these ideas but after you spend time with these people and their families you start to dress like them they start to dress like us uh, eat the same foods tell the same jokes have the same ideas uh, you almost become like family if you will were you, uh, when, when people, I got to ask, when people first saw you, because you're such a big man, <laughs> did, was that intimidating to some of these people? To some it was, but it's really amazing when you go to these different countries and you lift a lot of weights, and back then I lifted a lot of heavy weights, and they come up with these different awesome names for you uh, in the village, and they want to come and hug you and give you high five and fix your coffee and give you good water. Uh, you become like a big brother. To them, even if you're a younger guy because you're so tall or you're so masculine, uh, till you become almost like a family to, to all these people. What do you sing? What do you sing from both sides of the uh, earth, rather, both sides of the equator? What do you sing happening to Western cultures from what we talked about? And uh, I wasn't putting words in your mouth, but I'm li I was listening to what your experience is. Where, where, where do you see? Where do you see Western cultures? Hey, uh, you know, heading. What, what, what is it you're, you're, you're seeing? What I've noticed is, Barry, a lot of us are going to our own tribes. Uh, we're not trying to hang around each other and mingle with each other and be friends. We want to just go off to our own corners, if you will. And it's like my way or the highway type of thing. And I think it's better off if we all come together instead of just going off into our secluded corners. Do you think it's a divide, a divide of people within a nation? I think it is. I, I think it's pushed. And I think is 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 a, a huge divide amongst 
uh, the people. I don't think we want to be uh, different. Uh, a lot of us want to get along, but I think there's uh, unseen forces that's kind of pushing people to go into their own corners uh, out of fear because uh, everybody want a safe family and want to be happy. And I think people feel the best place to go is into their own corners and guard whatever they have. Do you think this is being caused by outside sources? Oh, absolutely. A absolutely. Even on the, the military fronts, is mm -hmm. we, um, we go there with a certain focus and we was very disciplined in our different maneuvers. But once we got to those places, we saw something totally entirely different and we became almost like family off duty. Uh, we hugged each other. We, we read books to each other. We talked about kids. Um, it was a beautiful thing. But then once certain things happened, we had to go into our own corners on that front. So I do think it's outside forces kind of pushing us apart. Without anything that... Do, do, do you think though some of these are staged events? Just a direct question from your experience. Are you referring to false flags type events? Uh, false flags, right. I didn't <laughs> want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> from my opinion, I, I think they are. You know, some of these things, I think there's like puppets a little bit. But I do think that uh, some of this stuff is kind of a setup. What is it when you returned home? I, I know uh, you have one son. Yes. And you have one daughter. Yes. And I know your son is living with you. Yes. Uh, how old is he now? Oh, he's four. He wears the same kind of hats. He's the cutest thing. But, uh, he but loves the, fedoras. He yeah. loves fedora hats. But the yes. thing is, what is it and when did you maybe decide that maybe um, another location for your retirement and raising your son? What, what is it? Uh, tell us a little bit what inspired that, Dave. Well, I started looking at his schooling. Uh, I started looking at the system that he's a part of. Um, he's in a great school. Uh, they're very disciplined. Uh, the issue I'm having, though, are he's becoming a robot. Um, they don't go outside much. Um, when he go to school, he's really clean and neat. Uh, have a white preppy shirt. Uh, when he come home, he's just as clean <laughs> and just as neat. Um, I don't feel he get a chance to play with other kids. Uh, and climb trees and, and play in the dirt and things like we used to do when we was uh, younger. Um, I think that there's another option outside the matrix than just being a robot of a kid. What other countries uh, did you consider? Not, not from your military mm -hmm. uh, background, but for your relocation plans. What were some of the other places that you considered? Well, one particular place I considered was uh, Brazil. Uh, yeah, you did talk a lot, yeah. Brazil is, is a beautiful country. Uh, great people in it. Um, I was strongly considering Brazil and I ended up coming here on a business trip and now I'm thinking about making this my, my home. Has it been a little bit enlightening or a little bit different? Than, what's different about here than Brazil? What did you find? Because I've been to Brazil, but I, not like you. Right. Okay. You know it a lot more than I would. So well, what are some of the differences? Well, I think is the agriculture for one, uh, the scenery, the, the greenery, uh, the land, um, the oceans. Um, one thing is a culture shock when I got here is I'm looking at the beach and I see cows walking in front of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that was kind of awesome. Uh, you got different trees around here, passion fruit trees. You got avocados. You just got so much fruit uh, and healthy foods that you can eat. It's, it's really uh, amazing the things that you see here that's not in Brazil. What about your waistline over the last two weeks, Dave? Beautiful. <laughs> I tell you guys, I have not tried not to be on a diet. I have been eating crazy. But the weird thing is I have lost two belt sizes since I've been here. And that's been maybe 10 days, 11 days. I'm losing weight and eating more uh, here. So the food is really great. No GMOs. Uh, drinking water, just having a good time here. But you will get healthier being in this country, just a natural feel. What about the environment? That ought to, Do you think that would help health a little bit as well? The environment is awesome. The stress level is down, way down. Um, there's no stress here at all. I mean, it's peacefulness, it's, it's smiles, it's, it's happiness here. I'm really enjoying the ambiance of this country. I'm glad to see that. I, uh, 
I always like to though just you know everybody's perspective of what they see and what they do is all on subjective matter like what's right or wrong for one is not right or wrong for the other and I always say you'll find trouble in any country you want Absolutely. to now you would know that better than anybody Absolutely. in the places you've been but what was did you notice any differences uh, between let's say the people between Brazil and here where you because Brazil was was your primary choice before you found out about us clowns over at DR Escapes <laughs> absolutely uh, Brazil is a great country still is I think the difference here is it's more intimate here um, the DR you can get whatever you want here um, but I'm a firm believer in like attracts like so if you're a good person with a good heart you will find that easily. Uh, if you the counterpart, you will find that also. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've encountered was great people, even in the grocery stores, uh, the farmers, the rice paddies, going through different villages. Um, you will find who you are here. So I, I really like the DR. We're here a couple of days after New Year's, and you know I took a couple of days off to be with Leanne. We spent New Year's alone, enjoying a bottle of wine. Uh, watching the fireworks, and then I, I, I met up with Dave today. Uh, we're 3rd of January, right? Third, yes. Yeah, we're 3rd of January. I met up with Dave, and then I found out, uh, since I left you a couple of days ago, why don't, you, why don't you fill in the group on a little bit of the things you decided to do on your own, because I just found out about it. <laughs> well, awesome. Nuts. <laughs> I did a little military move. <laughs> I struck out on my own in the middle of the night, and I went to the Capitol, and uh, on a little road trip. And I wanted to see what it was like being in, in the big city versus being in Cabrera and other small towns. And it was really uh, exciting seeing the different views that I saw on a different town. Much faster pace, uh, but I think this, this area is more suitable for me. If you're used to suburban living in the States and you're used to good smelling air and things like that, you want to come to a town like this. Well, these people, you didn't know them, right? And you just struck up a conversation with these two strangers. And, and I didn't know what, them. When was this middle of the night? You start heading up at 1 in the morning? You start heading, what, what, what? Well, well, the story is I kind of met one uh, at a restaurant, and I didn't know where I was staying. And one thing led to another, and I told them I'm staying by this place. And they said, okay, great. Well, we can show you the town. And I'm like, great. So <laughs> I just got up and said, let's go. And put all my important stuff back at the condo and I struck out in the middle of the night and came back about maybe, I don't know, eight, nine in the morning. <laughs> so you did an all night thing to the Capitol and hung around there, got some scenery and things like that and probably what, two, three, four in the morning and then came back? Yeah, there. absolutely, man. It was that's a strict road man, trip tonight. That, that, that's different. <laughs> yeah, it was that nice little road trip. Excellent. Nice little road trip. Excellent. You think, uh, what is it you, you can probably tell some people out there that maybe, uh, you know, I know some personal things we're not going to mention on camera, but personal friends that are, you know, a little bit on the uh, suffering depression, broken relationships. It, it apparently, not that it doesn't affect everywhere in the world, but it, apparently I'm hearing more and more of this out of Western cultures because I, they're, they're, uh, I believe they're trying to demoralize the nation, in my opinion. Well, I'll tell anybody, uh, especially the men out there, uh, there is another option <laughs> outside the matrix. There is another option. Um, you don't have to deal with the, the stress. Um, you got the business. You got the big house. You got the, the big yard and, and all that. But a lot of that stuff is causing a lot of us to check out early with heart attacks and diabetes and stress. And I'm telling you guys, uh, from a business owner perspective, you don't have to deal with all that stress there. If you just think about all the things that you have and why do you have it? Why do you need it? Is it important to me? You'll come to the sense that I don't need to have this big a yard. Uh, I have a golf cart. I didn't play golf at the time, you know, but I had it because to look the part, you know. So you want to do things to make you feel happy internal, your core not just to be doing it just because they are doing it. You want to be having peace of mind in your heart. And I think going to a place like this part of the DR, you will find that. I've seen people have much less and far more happier. Again, I'm losing weight or releasing weight. I am more happier. I don't feel any stress. Half the time I didn't know what day it was. I wouldn't answer any emails. So I really think that you really need to go somewhere outside of the matrix 
where you don't hear all that rah, rah, rah type of noise and kind of gather yourself where you can make some real important moves moving forward in your life. Because you don't want to be in your mid 50s, early 60s checking out and you don't have to. You want a good quality of life, not just live a long time. Would you say uh, the value of a U.S. dollar goes about the same as here as in Brazil, or more, one's better than the other? And what, what's because uh, you know of your personal experience? What what do you find because you're using U.S. Dollar? Absolutely, yes. Uh, everywhere I go, I take the American dollar to back me. But the uh, American dollar is much stronger here than in, in Brazil. That's one of the perks for me. I'm not so concerned about if it go up or down a little bit because you're still in great shape. You can get great meals, go great places for a really a small amount of, of, of money uh, here. Guys, this is Barry and Dave from DR Escapes and Something Feels Wrong. And until next time.